Hello and welcome to Lightways at Life Astrologer with me, Anna Isabel, and today, Israel Jose. Hello, Israel. Hello. <laughs> Great to be here. Thanks for having me here. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. And oh, it's a direct Mercury joy of joys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it went straight forward. That's right. Yes. Last time was something else. Yeah. Uh, so it's wonderful to see you. And yes, I. I couldn't resist inviting you back because <laughs> exciting things. Well, you're always doing exciting things, but I noticed. I try. <laughs> yeah. So I I noticed that you're you're doing quite a bit at the lodge in yes. in a three week period. Yeah. Um. And two of the talks that you're giving are mm -hmm. on zodiacal release, yeah, and I. Yeah just going to have to ask you what is that about because somebody in that in the audience is going to want to know <laughs> what, what zodiac releasing uh so zodiac releasing is um it's one of the many of the uh, what are known as time lord techniques and and um uh the in the hellenistic period predominantly they had um what was known as time lord techniques and and what it what the time lord techniques is based on our natal chart, um, they will be a particular point which was which would be known as a releaser. And at, at some point in our life, each of the planets, which are placed in different houses, depending on our own natal chart, will be activated and will begin to release the potential of what it is or where it is in our natal chart. And for that duration, while it's active or act been activated, we will start to experience the particular uh, circumstances and events. And depending on its aspects and, you know, the house that it's in, we start to experience that more fully in our lives during that particular period. Now, again, depending on the placement, it could be a, a challenging placement. So we may uh, experience a challenging time. But equally as well, it could be in a very, you know, uh, more uh, benefactual place and we will, uh, you know, experience, you know, uh, the, the joys of that planet also as well. Um, so the Zodiac release allows us to uh, unfold chapters in our lives. So it's somewhat of a forecasting predictive technique that kind of allows us to know, well, we're in this particular phase right now. Uh, this is what this phase is going to bring us and how best we can then work with it uh, during that particular time. And instead of maybe not working against it or or trying to fight it or avoid it and more try to embrace to understand that, well, your 10th house is activated. So this is a time of career or your profession and a time to perhaps maybe uh, uh, put more energy into that particular area of your life into the best way. So you will, you, you know, you get the maximum benefits of, of 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 that house and the same will go for any other house also as well so zodiac releases just allows us to know where what point there are particular points of releasing and uh there are other also mitigating factors also as well that has to be roped in but that is the essential part of the zodiac releasing it's a it's a, it's a time lord technique which allows us to understand various chapters of our lives so it's about seeing when the promise of the chart is going to be fulfilled exactly for better or worse exactly because we we've we've all got whether it's our sun moons you know mercury's and venuses they're in our charts in a particular house so um it, it's uh, I, I quite like the idea of that we we refer to the natal chart or many people have referred to the natal chart as it's known as the natal promise so we are promised something. And whether we want to say whether it's from God or the universe, there is some intelligence at work, as far as I'm concerned, or as I subscribe to that idea, that there's definitely an intelligence at work that is saying, well, this is who you are, and this is what you are promised. Um, okay, I'm promised this, but when? When when is that promise going to come alive for me? You know, um, uh, if I've got... Uh, uh, mercury in the second house um uh, which is to do with my money and we know mercury is the planet of communication and learning and connecting there's got to be a time when is that mercury going to work for me where i'm going to be able to see it and how it's linked with my money 
at, 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 at what point will I do that? At what point in my life is that going to be really activated where I'm going to see that? So th those are the things, uh, these are the techniques allows us to know that, okay, this is a particular time that Mercury is getting activated. Now is where you're going to see the, the real fruits of this. I mean, it could be that, yes, if somebody's got Mercury in their second house, they, they are somewhat maybe even using that even in their day-to-day -day lives. But there's going to be times where they're more prominent. So, for example, an actor is, uh, you know, if, if 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 we took an actor who, who acts, uh, that that's their job, right? They they you know they get called to be on set or whatever and act the film. But there will be particular times, perhaps maybe where they're in a really big oh. movie, or, you know, you know, a blockbuster, and maybe it wins Oscars or wins or it's up for awards or something like that. That's not going to be every day. Uh, but they will, they will act a number of films. They may act, you know, hundreds of films throughout their lifetime, but there's going to be one movie that, oh, I remember such and such for that movie that, oh, you know, that's the one that she got the Oscar for. That's the one he got the Oscar for or got the awards for. That will, that was, that was when your, 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 your acting career was prominent when it was at its highest, at its peak. And these time law techniques allows us to know when certain parts of the chart are at their peak. Defining moments. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Finding, yeah. well, you see, this is where I keep urging everybody to join the lodge, become yeah. a member. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's, there's always something fascinating yes. um, on every week, mm. and just thinking now about the the last talk that you're giving, yes. which is the reason I invited you on here, because not many people talk about perfections. Yes. So this is not perfections; it's Pro Profections, yes. <laughs> those who are new to, to this, um, hmm. what are they? So Profections, again, another Time Lord system, again. And uh, Profections, um, uh, essentially, again, based on our chart, Profections is a way of we perfect the chart. So what happens is generally when we talk about Profections, uh, in most cases, people tend to focus on the ascendant. So we are all born with an ascendant. And what happens is from the moment we are born, the, the ascendant will perfect approximately each house every year. It will go through the houses. So from the moment we are born to age one, we will, the ascendant perfects from the first house to the second house. From the moment we're age two, it perfects from the second house to the third house and so on and so forth. So it goes round through the houses. So it takes on a different quality, depending obviously on the house that it comes to and obviously the sign that is in that house. So for somebody, for example, who is Leo rising, for example, for that first year of their life, the perfected year will be Leo. And then when they turn one, then they're going to go into Virgo. Then it will be Libra, Scorpio, and it will go around the chart one year after another. And then it comes back round again and repeats. So every 12 years, the ascendant perfects back to its original place at that first house and it goes back round again until the end of life. So every time the ascendant perfects to a house, again, we will meet depending on the planet that rules that house or if there are planets in that house also as well, we will meet the experiences of those particular planets. Those planets become activated that house becomes activated based on, you know, and it's quite easy. Uh, the initial part of it is actually quite easy because each house has a particular age. So very often when people take to me and they say, oh, you know, so for, for example, when people are 30, you know, 30 is a seventh house perfection. So when people say to me, oh, they are 30, they, you know, they, they, you, you know, seventh house matters tends to rise up. Um, it was quite interesting. Uh, I was at a, a bar, my friend's bar, uh, a few months ago, and uh, there was a group of people, they were having a little party, and, and they brought out the cake for them and everything, and they were singing Happy Birthday, and everybody in the restaurant was sort of like, you know, people who wasn't even, you know, just cheered for her and stuff like that. 
And um, there was a point where I was standing up next to the door and they were all about to leave. And I said, I said, oh, happy birthday, by the way. You know, I saw the birthday girl and she goes, oh, thank you. And I said, how old are you? She went, I'm 30. And I was like, oh, wow, great. And in my head, I've obviously calculated it. I thought, seventh house perfection. And I said, oh, you're probably going to get married this year. And she went, oh, my God. And her boyfriend was there. <laughs> her boyfriend was there. And six months prior, the boyfriend had given her an engagement ring. So she's obviously banking on getting married, obviously, in the next year. And she kind of looked at him like that. And he liked to, He looked at me and he went, as if to say, how the heck did you know that? <laughs> you know, and I thought, <laughs> but I don't, because I haven't seen the chart. I haven't seen the full chart to, to the thing. But I just threw it out there. But I do know that, okay, not everybody who's 30 is going to get married. Of course not. But a, there will be a seventh house theme in that particular person's life at that particular age. Um, so, th th you know, so it's very quite simple. Because, so there are other things that do need to be looked at when we when the ascendant is perfected to a house. We do have to look at the house ruler, what it's doing, because in many cases it's in another place entirely in the chart. And depending where it's it, that place is going to get activated also as well. And then we also have to take into consideration, are there planets actually in that house that we have perfected to? Because they are automatically going to get also activated also as well, depending, uh, um, you know, on, on, on the chart. So those are things have to, those are secondary things that we have to take into consideration. Then we, we've got further information or detail as to how it is, how the year is likely going to be is it going to be a challenging year is it going to be a difficult year are we coming to a house where there's a difficult planet or there's a planet in a difficult position or are we coming to a house where the planet is really you know positive and it's to an a, an advantage you know all of those things will um will, will you know will show um another example uh, for so for example um year before last in 2022 to 2023 I was in my fourth house perfection and um I thought fourth house well that's about the home right so you know and I thought well I'm not moving I've got no well certainly I've got no money to move anyway um I'm not planning on moving I'm quite okay where I am no uh, so I, I just kept thinking what the hell could happen you know with the, with the home you know um, anyway, it came round, and I'm talking literally to the date. At, at the moment my birthday, like the next day, um, uh, the doorbell went. I uh, went, oh, delivery. Uh, my partner had ordered this new sofa, and and the whole house. She's just she was just for the whole year. Oh, we've got to paint that wall, and that, that's got to be done, and we're redoing the kitchen, and and I'm like. What the heck is going on? What's wrong with this sofa? It's only a couple of years. Yeah, no, 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 no. I think we should have it. She's got this new sofa and she's got this uh, she, new cupboards and she's just rearranged the house. I, I went out, I came, my desk was changed. I thought, what the heck? And then all of a sudden the penny dropped. I thought, ah, right. You're in the fourth house perfection. Your house is going to change. <laughs> so I may not have moved house, but there was somebody in the house who was changing everything up for me. So, <laughs> so those are the kinds of things, you know, that, that, that will tend to happen. The affairs of that house will come alive depending on its perfection. But on a, on a, on another note, secondary, like I said, most astrologers and most people look at the ascendant. That is predominantly what we profect. And the reason why is because, um, especially with the ancients and traditional astrology, they saw the ascent as the most personal part of the horoscope. The ascendant represented how you were, uh, if you want to say, uh, catered for by the environment, your connection, your plug into the environment. So the ascendant represented life itself, you know, hence why it represented the body. It was to do with your health also as well. So very often we can also see perhaps maybe when if the ascendant is coming to a difficult planet. So maybe it may come to a house, maybe where Saturn is, you might be a bit challenged uh, in terms of your health. And I experienced that a few years ago during the COVID uh, years because uh, the, the, the perfected, it perfected to my 12th house where Saturn was and I was hospitalized. 
So these are the kinds of things which, you know, can, you know, it can say, okay, well, this is going to be this year, you may have to be very careful about your health and, and things of that nature. Uh, and you can also prepare. So that year before I came into where Saturn was into my 12th house, I saw it coming. So I thought, okay, what I'm going to do. So I, I signed up to the gym and, you know, started going to the gym regularly and started running every morning and, you know, making sure I was fit. And yes, I was fit. So when the healness hit me, that really helped because I remember the doctor saying, I'm very impressed with you because your lungs are very good. And he goes, did you exercise? And I said, yeah, I do a bit of jogging and I do go a bit swimming. He goes, very good. But nevertheless, the COVID got into the lungs anyway, and I got the blood clots. But they were quite impressed that there was no underlining illnesses. There were, and that helps me be able to recover because I did get hit with it quite heavy. Whereas, so I was allowed to prepare for that. So those are the kinds of things, again, which these Time Lord uh, techniques can actually show us. But the other thing I was going to add is that anything can be perfected. So you can perfect from the sun, from the moon, from Mercury, from Venus. And it can also, depending on what they signify in our life generally anyway, we know that Venus is relationships. So it's it, it, you can look at Venus when she's going to perfect to the house maybe where Scorpio is. Now we know that Venus may have it a bit more challenging times in Scorpio. So that year could be a bit more of a challenging time relationship-wise. It doesn't mean the relationship's going to break up or anything, but it just may be, it may, the relationship just may be, get a bit intense for that particular period. So we can pr perfect any planet, but the ancients, they, the five, there was what was known as the five places of life. And the five places of life was the sun, the moon, the ascendant, the part of fortune, and what was known as the prenatal lunation. And the prenatal lunation was either the new moon or the full moon that occurred prior to birth. That was known as the prenatal lunation. And those were the five places of life. And those were the five places that would often be looked at in terms of perfect, they would use those five as well. But anything can be perfected. It could be your Mercury, your Venus, your Saturn. We can perfect it through the year. So the whole chart is being perfect. Everything is moving. One house per year. So if, if actually the, the first, it's making me think the first time I came across perfections mm. was uh, with Nicola Alsop's book um, right. to do with fertility. Right. Because she works specifically to help couples uh, to conceive. Right. She, so she really, but she does work with perfections as part right. of that. Yes. So to clarify for people yes. who are new to this, so we're perfecting the ascendant. We've got that. Yes. But then we're perfecting the other planets. Right. Are we perfecting the entire chart? So as we might uh, progress a chart so that we have a, a progressed chart. Right. Yes. Or are we doing this individually? We're perfecting the whole chart, essentially speaking. But but what most people do is they just focus on the ascendant. But the whole chart is being perfected. Everything is being perfected. Every planet is being perfected. It's moving. And it's moving one house every year. One house every year. It's moving into, yes. And so does that mean then that the... If we're if the ascendant is the thing as right. yeah, is, yeah, yes. Does that mean that there's going to be a new ascendant in that perfected chart? Because if so, then the chart ruler would change from year to year, and perhaps if that planet that, that, two is being highlighted. Yes, almost oh, definitely. Uh, exactly you got it bang on. So every year there is going to be so what what how the ancient Hellenistics spoke about this is like it's like every year we have like um, a caretaker. So in our own natal charts, we have our chart ruler, which is known as the chart ruler, which is, we know that a chart ruler is very important. But then as the years, each year, there's a planet that will take over and that planet will like be the caretaker for you of your life for that year. So for example, if we got somebody who's perhaps Taurus rising, 
obviously their chart ruler is Venus. But then the following year after their birthday, if they if they if the if it was perfected from this, if we were taking it from the ascendant, the following year, Mercury, because Gemini is the next sign along. So Mercury is now going to be the caretaker for that year. He will preside over the affairs of how or what is going to happen. And depending where Mercury is in the chart, it will let us know what is likely going to manifest for that person. What kind of experiences, what are the archetypes that the person is going to meet through that year? And then after that, then it's going to go to Cancer. Then the moon's going to take over. Then it will go to Leo. Then the sun will take over. Then back to Virgo and so on and so forth. And so it so each year there is a different ruler that is presiding over the life of the native. And is is the ascendant degree then going to remain the same? No, no. <laughs> Good question. So that's where we now start getting into detail. Um, no, it's not going to make. Uh, it's not going to be the same degree. It will change. So we know that there's thirty degrees in a sign. So if we was to divide that through the 365 day, it works out that the degree moves approximately two and a half degrees each month. So, yes, so that's... So it will move approximately about a degree or so each week, two weeks, something like that. It will move one degree. So that's so that's something to consider is that we're not just perfecting the the ascendant, yeah, but the degrees also. The, yes, yes. When you really want to get into the fine details, because what does tend to happen, a lot of people again they take it from year to year, but sometimes, for example, if somebody's got uh, an ascendant at twenty degrees, well, there's only ten degrees left of that sign. So what happens is from uh, from their birthday, it's starting at that twenty degrees. So, but ten, you know, the ten degrees that uh, you know that that are left are going to be over in about three four months. So within three four months, what they may find is the activity of the next house has already started. So we go back to the thirty year old in the restaurant, right? Who, who's <laughs> Whose fiance had the shock of his life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, I hope he had proposed by then because otherwise he Yes. Would... Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, he had because he bought on an engagement ring. Yes, and I she so yeah. So so she said to me, she goes, Oh, he he she goes, he bought me an engagement ring six months ago. Exactly. So, right. So what I was thinking was that perhaps the this in this instance yes the perfection of this going into the seventh house may well have happened exactly before, before the birthday right, exactly yes. yes and just as well for you i think otherwise that poor man. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank god she wasn't paying me <laughs> <laughs> but um but yes yeah yeah, so you're, you're, you're spot on. That That's what it is. So, um, so yeah, so that's the... But the, the main crux of it is that it, it's moving. People tend to just do it once a year and it's moving into a house. But yes, if you would really start working with the degrees, they will change at, depending, you know, if you're... If it's a, if you've got an early... I mean, for myself, I'm, you know, two degrees rising. So it's quite, you know... Uh, 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 but I do, I do start seeing elements of the shift about about a month before my birthday because of that two degrees but that's only a month but i'm fortunate in that in that if we if i want to say that that i'm fortunate to have that early degree rising some people are 28 29 degrees rising so by the time they've come to that birthday that perfection is actually you know you may have noticed that it's actually coming to an end they're getting ready to move into the next house <laughs> <laughs> so, so if we're thinking about birthdays yes um, and we're thinking okay well this is when we're going to do our general check our yes. general annual check check yes <laughs> okay so if that's what we're doing there's that there's the perfections in addition to the solar return exactly so yes. there are two different techniques yes that you get a an understanding right. of what's coming um, yep. 
in in the in the year so yes. you know people tend to there are three things that drive people to look at their charts number one yes. a crisis yes number two, a new year and yes. number three, a birthday yeah. um <laughs> to probably uh yeah. it will um measure but the so this is um very useful i think because yeah. You know, one of the things that happens when people start learning astrology and yes. they find an empty house and they right. and they think that that house is is never going to be yeah active. Yes. And and then of course we teach them about significators and we Yeah. But then, you know, they begin to notice that whenever there's any activity mm -hmm. in a house mm -hmm. from a transit right. or progression that's becoming uh but this is yet something else that people yes. can. so those empty houses you know and yes. of course nobody wants an empty fifth or eleventh um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> good news, everybody <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so all is not lost if the yeah yeah of course of course not of course not. Yeah. have occupied are not yeah. um all is not lost because yeah. you know they do come a visiting Oh yeah, oh yeah, most definitely. Yes, yes. Um, with perfections, they will be activated. Um, and you said something there also about the solar return. Um, uh, again, the traditional Hellenistic astrologers always use the solar return alongside the perfections. Essentially, that's what the solar return actually was for. It was to use alongside the perfections. So how it was used is depending what house you came to but you perfected to whatever planet ruled that house that's the planet that they would look for in the solar return yes i i, I had a vague memory of that being the case but yes, yes. so they would look for that planet so if mercury was the lord uh, so the ancients used to refer to it as the lord of the year so for example me and you could be talking about astrology and i'll say oh i know who's your lord of the year meaning who's the lord of the house that you have perfected to in your natal chart. And you might say, oh, it's the moon. Okay, so then I would say, well, where is the moon in your solar return? What is she doing? Because she is further going to back up what it is that is in your natal chart. So, it, it, so what they were looking for were repeats. So for example, let's say just for example, you had the moon in the 10th house and you said, well, I've got the moon in the 10th house in my natal chart. And then we looked in your solar return and the moon was in the 10th house. Ah, now we know, definite. There's no if, buts or maybes. Something's going to be happening here in the terms of, in terms of your career. So that's what they would look at. And those were the parts of the emphasis that they would emphasize. They emphasize on other things as well in the solar return, but that was one of the, that's how they use them together. So just thinking more about this, because obviously we're talking about Hellenistic astrology. Yes. So everything stops at Saturn. Yes. Yes. And yet we know everything does not stop at Saturn. Of course. <laughs> and so let's say um, the perfection, this year's perfection, there is Scorpio rising. Right. And we're going to be looking at Mars anyway. Oh, right. Yeah. But I would also be wanting to look at Pluto. Are yeah. you the same? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, no. <laughs> um, I wouldn't look at Pluto as a ruler. But what I do use the outer planets and I would pay especially close attention to them when we when the when we are perfected to the house where Pluto is. Uh -huh. Now, now we're talking. So but if if I come to a house where Scorpio is, I would look at solely just Mars. Um, if there's aspects to Pluto, of course, most definitely, I would have to no no choice. But mainly with it, uh, with Pluto or the outer planets, I would pay very close attention to them when we come to the house where they are located. Then, so if you had Pluto in your fourth house and you come to a fourth house perfection, like myself, I've got Pluto in my fourth house, and I'm thinking, well, nothing's happening here. Surely not. <laughs> and I come to my fourth house, and my partner says. I don't think so. 
everything's being uprooted. Everything's going to get transformed in here. You know, we're going. I'm stripping everything. The kitchen and, and uh, day after day, the buzzer kept going. Delivery, delivery, and it was a new thing. And it's and it's like, what what have you ordered this time? And it's new blinds, and it's a new door, and it's a new, and everything's changed. And that that is Pluto. So. Would we then be looking at issues around powerlessness and, and power? You, you've hit the nail on the head because to some degree, that's how I felt. Uh, <laughs> you know, and um, at, at one point I said, I remember saying, well, don't you think you should discuss with me? Like, you know, <laughs> you know what you're doing or, or, or whatever. And she turned around and said, uh, not really. Uh, because, and I said, well, why? She, well, she says, well, it, it wouldn't matter anyway what you say. I'm going to put my taste to it. I'm fine. She's got very good taste. I do like her taste. Uh, the place does look better. I'm not disputing that. But she says... It wouldn't matter what you pick anyway. I, I, I've got my uh, the way in, in terms of what it should look. And then she topped it up with, and plus I'm a woman anyway. And the women, you know, they they rule the house and we say what goes on. Um, <laughs> to which point I thought, okay, Pluto in the fourth house, I'll, I'll surrender. I'll let, I'll let it go. Do the transformation. <laughs> just, just, just. <laughs> I was gonna say just well that you're a Libra. Yeah. Um, but but it, it I, I like the question that you asked there because yes, that's how I felt. At one point I felt powerless because it was like it was outside there was something about power because I, I wasn't controlling it and I felt somebody was controlling me and it was like you're controlling my surroundings and and you know it's very yeah <laughs> there was definitely a huge plutonic energy there, most definitely. Yes. Because what you're describing there is yes. the true Pluto experience, which is, yeah. hey, you're transforming, like it or not. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's the Pluto experience. Yeah. yeah. And it's like there is no negotiation, no, no. Oh, oh no. Choice in the <laughs> and so it, it's what you had there was almost a Pluto transit, just uh, hopefully a bit more pleasant. Than... Yeah. <laughs> well, it was. It, it turned out nice, don't get me wrong, but it was just so everything was, I mean, I'd go out, I'd, I, you know, go out somewhere or whatever meeting or, and I'd come back and I thought that that wasn't here before. It's changed li literally within the space of hours. What has happened? Like, what, really? I'm talking my work with the my, where I'm speaking to you from now. My desk is totally. She's got this iron thing, and she and she arranged my books, and she did it nicely. But it was like that's not that's not what I left. You, you, and there was no discussion. <laughs> I just went out and came back, and something's changed. And it was lit. It was practically every day. It got to the point where every time I was putting the key in the door, I was just thinking, I wonder what's changed now. <laughs> the wonder is that you left the house at all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for, for sharing that. that yeah. That's a personal experience. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she changed the whole house. And I'm talking everything. I'm talking the bedroom, the bed. The, the carpet, I mean, it, and, and that's what we're talking Pluto. She, it really, and, and it's quite interesting that you mentioned about the Pluto because that's where I really started to, because it was coming, it felt like it was coming from, and it was the floorboards, it was the carpet and everything had to be uprooted. And it's like, wow. And that's when it really, the penny kind of dropped that. That's your Pluto speaking right there. That's your Pluto being activated. Do you have Pluto in aspect to anything else in your chart obviously it's not an aspect of pluto i'm guessing but anything <laughs> well well it, it it kind of it well it's 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 um it's uh uh quincunx my my moon and it squares my ascendant so yeah those are the two more powerful aspects in terms of what it makes it sextiles my jupiter as well but the you know with the uh, yeah i don't I, I I still I'm still working with that. I don't quite know how to work that one out. But there's a sex style to Jupiter also as well. But yeah, those are the powerful aspects into which it makes. Yes, I was just thinking because it's sitting there. It's in your fourth house. Yeah, and, 
and it's being perfected. So basically, yes. is now triggering the original square to the ascendant. Right. Yes. Perfection. So ascendants involved anyway. Right. So exactly. It, obviously, you don't have to answer this because it's a, a very yeah. personal. But it just makes me think about your relationship with power. Yes. And <clears throat> have to to think about that. You know, what is the root? Where is my power? What is the root right. of my power? Yes. 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 It, yes. You know, every, the ground is shifting around. Me. Right, exactly, it's, exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, what what do I do about that? How do yes. I power? How do I redefine yeah. my own power? power. And, yes. You know, all of those questions come into um, into being there. So, so thank you so much for sharing your yes. own personal experience because yeah. it is a perfect illustration of why yeah. the are important yes yes so i guess the the next question would be were you going through any transits to your fourth house that would have accentuated this or was this the sole highlight of uh, yeah that, that was the sole highlight of it there wasn't no big transits i had obviously of course when the sun went through there and uh venus and mercury uh, but there wasn't no of the the bigger planets, the Saturns, the they 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 didn't do have any uh, particular effect on it. Uh, and maybe thank God. For that. <laughs> well, this was... okay. maybe you know that would have uh, you know uh, livened things up. So um, so yeah, so so on that front, yeah, no, they they that that was fine. Um, but yeah, the smaller planets went through there, but but that was about it. But I definitely felt a very strong just like what you said and i had to come to one of the one of uh you know studying with this green uh, um i i recall her saying and i i, I had to really reflect back on it at, at that time where she said one of the ways that you have to deal with plutonic um uh, uh, uh well experiences essentially is trust trust has a lot to do with it and and that's where I, at one point I said, okay, uh, let me just trust the process. <laughs> yes, I did. I'm not going to lie. I did feel insecure and I didn't feel what's happening here. But let me just trust the process, and you know it. You know it, it will. And and that that helped me get through. You know. Actually, that is absolutely fundamental with Pluto transits, mm. because. If you don't trust the process, you fight against it. Exactly. And then you feel more powerless than ever. Mm -hmm. And this is where things can get really, yes. really nasty. But yes. you, you have to, because you have no choice. Yes. You, you yes. know, this is Pluto. You have no choice. Exactly. Yes. And, and it, it reminds me of the the the, the mythology of uh, Odysseus and uh, uh, to, you know trying to get his wife on the underworld and. You know, Hades tells him, well, okay, you, you don't, don't look back, but, uh, you know, no matter what you hear, just keep walking. And if you can walk out of here without looking back, you can get your wife back. But, you know, the the, the, the process, the screams, the the things that he heard, you know, to, <laughs> a little bit we find in the Bible with, with, with uh, you know, we find that similar story with uh, uh, lots uh, uh, lots, lots wife. Again, you know, not looking back, you know, they say, don't look back. There's something about trust the process, just keep going. Keep going. Trust the process that everything will be okay. Um, and so I had to do that. <laughs> yeah, and and that's and that is the thing. I think with Pluto and Neptune both, I the you know we would we would use the word faith for Neptune. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Trust for Pluto, but it amounts to the same thing, really, because you still yeah. you still have to. It was Neptune. You you have to float. You have yes. to. Try you're not going to drown drown exactly if you if you if you start you know trying you're to, to just, yeah you're going to be exhausted you're going to drown right, and yeah. with Pluto well you know it's it's the god of the underworld and well, yeah yeah it's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're brothers you know Neptune yeah, no, yeah that's right um, yes yes they <laughs> They don't really have good days like Jupiter. You know? <laughs> and we have to remember that Pluto, you know, that Hades was the god that you could not negotiate with. 
you there, there was no life. no appeasement of this god that you know it didn't matter you know what sacrifices you made or it was absolute there was no no entreaty he All was there right as the uh. final judge as well he was there as the final judge right and so it he could see right through you and so he there was, was no comebacks there was no I, this is not something I would normally say um, in any context, but in this one, it's very applicable. No BS. It's Pluto. Yes, exactly. will look right at you and he will know what your intentions were behind every action. Action, exactly. So there's no justification. There's no rationalization. There is gotcha. nothing. He looks at you. He knows. Did you mean to do this? Was your was your intent Intention, right. good or for good or for ill? If it was for ill, goodbye. You are going into the equivalent of, of hell. And if it was for good, but it didn't work out, okay, maybe I will mm -hmm. consider. And you could well end up in the Elysian fields because right, he exactly. knows. He knows. Right. Yes, he knows. Yes cannot hide yeah yeah exactly exactly he might have an invisibility helmet but you really you don't, don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the experience of the pluto transit in in effect yeah and in this case thankfully it, it wasn't you know uh you you knew to just trust the process otherwise right. yes. yes it could have been a lot more serious in terms of yeah. your relationship etc so yes, yeah. uh, your whole home life yeah so, yeah perfect. so the, yeah perfected yeah but the perfect was over now so how's it done <laughs> who has done what he's done <laughs> uh, so this the duration so let's let's talk about duration yes. here was it neat as in i mean you said the day <laughs> the oh day. yeah practically to the day yeah yeah the, the sofa arrived yeah yes and, yes and did it finish with the end of the perfection oh yeah Oh, it, 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 yes. Oh, it, it, it went on month after month. It was one thing or another. Something was changed. I'm talking, it was either what th this month we're focusing on the bathroom. And then, you know, I, I mean, I would walk in and there was these different men in my house just working and putting up screws and drilling holes. And it's like, OK, what, what, what's this for? And what... <laughs> you know what? there are two thoughts that occur to me about this. Yeah. Uh, your partner is a fantastic project manager and <laughs> would want to hire her yeah <laughs> and the second thought is anybody wishing to renovate their homes look at your perfections yeah yeah exactly <laughs> because every bank of time unless you've got saturn sitting in there and they live yeah, yeah. <laughs> experience and it was quite, I mean, there was at one point, it was like, you know, sometimes she'll be popping out and her and her, her mom will come to pick her up and they're like, oh, where are you guys going? Ikea. Oh, okay. Um, so I know that <laughs> something's coming back. <laughs> every, she must have gone there like every week. It was like, it was, there was still be, so even if it had to be a little plant pot or something, there would be something that has to come in the house to change it all up and put new shelves up and there was new cupboards and new do you know what i almost feel like asking you to give us a tour <laughs> <laughs> there was something with the new lamp and the new plants and then the, it was just one thing after another it was it was like wow <laughs> whole house transformed I wonder how your cat felt. <laughs> well, he was losing his mind because he, you know, he's very shy, and you know, when he sees people, he's well, so he's seeing all these strangers coming, and one person's drilling, and he's off, and he's under the settee, and he's oh god, it was. Do you happen to have a chart for him? Yes, I do. I do have a chart for him. Yes, yes, I, I do have a chart for him. Yes, yes. And see what was happening in his chart. Yes, yes, that would be interesting. Actually, I didn't do that, but yes, I would have to have a look at that because that would be yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I tell you what, stuff that happens in our house, Teddy's chart always shows it. Oh wow! Yeah, Teddy's chart always shows it. Oh, and yes, people, Teddy is my dog. Dog, yes, uh, I know. Yes, yes, yes. 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 But, yeah, um, so that was make then, sense. Ah, oh, yeah, yes and, yes. and particularly if the if there are correlations, as there are likely to be between your charts, 
Of course, uh, yes. I mean, he's 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 uh, he's he's cancer. So, and I'm cancer rising. So, it, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. Well, me because I, I was just thinking, you know, Teddy has his ascendant exactly my partner's moon conjunct my partner's moon, oh, and wow. you know, there was some big stuff happening last time. Right. Yes, not yeah. Leo. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Big stuff happening. And my goodness, you know, it, 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 it definitely, he, he felt. Right, right yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So anyway, there's food for thought for you. Um, yes, definitely. For, for everybody watching, um, I am going to have a link to the Astrological Lodge of London mm -hmm. in the description box so that you can as soon as you finish watching this <laughs> go online and um if you haven't already become a member do become a member or you can just um make sure that they, they can attend this individual lectures if they wish yes yeah that, that, that option's there absolutely because yeah. as as we have illustrated our yes. conversation today there is quite a lot of fun to be had um uh, looking at not just the perfections Yes. But these Time Lord techniques that you're going to be sharing with everyone. Yes. So thank definitely. you very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. <laughs> Great to be here. <laughs> and thank you all for watching. Next time, we're still looking at prediction because uh, we're going to be looking at progressions and mm -hmm. cycles because Anne Whitaker will be back. Until <laughs> then, ah, before I go, just a, a little thought for you. I am now running uh, courses on new courses on aspects and new courses on the houses, as well as uh, coming up very soon. Um, oh, I've got more coming up, don't I? So a course on Jupiter, Saturn, and many of the centaurs, including Chiron, as well as one that's a complete introduction to astrology. So if you're interested, get in touch. Mm -hmm. Until next time, goodbye.